So hey everybody, I'm here with these amazing musicians who were part of our Sisters in Jazz Gen 2021, 2020, 2021 um, excursion through outer space. And it was just amazing. And I just want to make sure everyone gets to meet them on a little more extensive platform than just the quick video. Well, not so quick video, right? You guys, it took us a while to put that together, but it's considering how much material we came up with, it was also really miraculously quick. So first of all, the woman who helped make it all work out by keeping me on task, Ellen Rowe is here. Hey guys, hey everybody, happy birthday Ingrid. Thank you, thanks for all your help with this, Ellen. It, it seems, you know, after running a jazz department for the last semester and seeing how difficult it is to get people to create content and do it in a professional way, that is still has artistic integrity. What we did here, what you all did here was short of miraculous, nothing short of miraculous. It's incredible. So let's hear from these amazing women and each of them, I wanted to each speak a little bit about their tunes and or anything else they wanna say. So Minnie, you're in the top left of my screen. Oh Jordan yeah. Jordan plays the violin. Yeah, so my tune was Taylor Bird. Um, and I was, this past year, I've been doing this thing where all my tunes, I kind of made a personal goal to have all my tunes be inspired by bird song as an effort both to get over writer's block and also to connect more with nature, which is generally what I would rather be doing instead of being in practice room. Um, so it was great. I, um, well, I didn't kill two birds with one stone because that's kind of counter to the message, but um, it's not counter to the sentiment. Um, so Taylor Bird was actually a tune I wrote when I didn't have any access to birds. So I went to the Macaulay Library, which is a really cool library of bird songs that anyone can access. And I was just listening to bird songs for a very long time. And I found this um, recording of all these tailor birds in India. And I was listening to it and I was like, whoa, I am hearing all this counterpoint and all these like little different voices. So it gave me the idea and the original melody was actually a bird song. It's like, dwee, 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 doo -dee. and then I filled in the rest of it and added all these little counterpoint bits to emulate birds. That's such a cool story. I didn't know that. It's so fun to know that after the fact, isn't it, you guys? Unless she told you a behind my back on a private Zoom. <laughs> That's a really great story. And I totally hear you. I've been inspired by bird songs and listening to the bird chirps and stuff and then try to transcribe them. It's so fun. But what you wrote based on that is now it really makes even more sense. It's great, great playing, great writing. But I've all. Uh, Yvonne. Cool. Uh, I play piano and my tune was Rising from Empty Fields, which was also um, kind of related to birds. Uh, I feel like we had a little bit of a bird theme through this whole thing, which was cool. But yeah, I spent a lot of time at home in Maine over the pandemic and there's like uh, these fields outside my house and there's these huge hawks that just kind of like float by sometimes outside the window. Um, so the tune was supposed to be like very floaty and open and just chill, I guess. And it was cool because um, for the arrangement for this band, um, we kind of like opened it up so everyone had a chance to like layer in and solo a little, um, which was really fun because I had just played at Trio previously. So it was cool to hear everyone kind of like layering in and playing with each other, despite the fact that we mm -hmm. all recorded it separately, but we were able to kind of like play with each other um, despite that, which was it really cool. does sound like it was live the way you, you all ended up recording it and the blend between the violin and the two horns is extraordinary. It sounds like a larger, larger ensemble than it actually was. And you wrote so beautifully. And, and also what I liked about it was the way your tune inspired those free 
sections that we did that tied it all together. I don't think, I think it would've been really hard to make that happen if we hadn't spent so much time sort of discussing your tune first. Somehow it worked, it, it created this thread throughout, so. Definitely. Thank you. So beautiful. Let's do Alex. Alex, we played, we did two of your tunes. We did your ballad 2020, 2020, really? It's so old now. It's so 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the other piece that was kind of an excerpt of something you had written, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm muting myself. You talk. Yeah, no, cool. Uh, I guess I don't have as much of an interesting story. <laughs> but um, yeah, the ballad was like, I think it started off as an assignment for a composition class, like in the early stages. And then I don't know, I just sort of um, stuck with this motif that I was writing. And um, but the I guess the thing that was different was um, a I, I it did feel like I was arranging it in a sense um, in that I kind of had this tune that I I've like played it a couple of times before. Um, so that was really it was really cool to like um, do it from that angle rather than like oh I'm writing for this band which is also cool but you know it was it was really interesting and then um, but yeah I guess as the kind of influence of that it was it's hard to say I don't really know it just sort of it was it was at a time when I was like it was before the pandemic just so it was kind of like things were happening um, and then yeah, the little excerpt of Sum Up, that was very much a lockdown project thing. Um, I'd written this EP of music in like the first lockdown. And yeah, this was like kind of the ending of the EP. So it's kind of like the sum up, it's kind of cheesy. But yeah, I kind of, um, I just took some elements of it and then made it into like a little segue uh, piece. But yeah, there's nothing it like- It also really worked really well to set up the, the other free section too, even though we didn't really plan that. They all they all were so seamless in that. Yeah, definitely. I thought it like the whole thing goes together so well, like um, in terms of everyone's pieces, like the start to finish, I think it like couldn't be better to be honest. Gorgeous. And it was like, you all sort of shook hands through material from the beginning. Like we were like introducing ideas and themes and it shows how powerful well-written music can can feed improvisation that's another thing i have to bring up here so you all wrote so well and the choices of the material also created like a perfect show it's perfect it's beautiful it's one little part of it i was like oh i just if i had one more day to edit i would have had them do a couple more tapers but even then it was great sam unmute tell us about Hello. your <laughs> Sorry, then we'll let you go. Around. We're all gonna go because it's my birthday. I gotta go eat some cake. <laughs> um, so my tune um is called Convocation, and um, I wrote it because um I was asked to put together a group and perform um for when I was at Berkeley, the the jazz composition and harmony department merged, and we had like kind of a social event, and I was asked to play and. I always like to use um, performances as an excuse to write something new. Um, so yeah, again, I don't really have the most inspiring story to say about it, but I just kind of sat down and wrote uh, that. And I made some revisions um, for this performance. I added the 4-4 section that went into the solos and the drum feature. So I think that worked yeah. out. Smoke and I think it could be actually a big band chart now that I think about it. Now you've got all <laughs> different sections, a little through composition situation going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. It's great closer. Perfect. Played your saxophone, you know, what off. Sounds so great. All of you. So Jordan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? And also if you could, you know, just whatever you want to share about your tune that you contributed. Absolutely. So um, thank you so much for having us here. My name is Jordan Davis. Uh, I play the bass and I'm a composer. Um, also getting into being a, a vocalist 
and trying to figure out what that looks like and what that means for me and my bass. Um, and I'm also a singer songwriter and do like composition for uh, film and um, concert works and jazz works and that sort of thing. Um, and so the tune that I did for the Sisters in Jazz program was uh, basically a rewrite of this jazz standard called Wives and Lovers. And um, it's actually like one of my favorite musical pieces of pieces of music. Um, and it is, it's, it's so beautiful. It's like typically in three, four. And um, if you've ever heard the song and I would recommend that, uh, you know, trigger warning, it is incredibly sexist and misogynist. <laughs> it's really, really horrible. Thanks, um, thanks, for, thanks for warning us. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty horrible. And I just found that to be incredibly unacceptable for how great of a piece of music it is. So I rewrote the lyrics um, and I was actually gonna do like a, a rendition of it for like my first like festival gig. And then it just kind of like uh, fell apart. And the Sisters in Jazz helped me kind of like revitalize this concept that I had, especially like getting to work with uh, an all female band, which is like super rare um, in college anyway. I know that my jazz program probably has 10 women out of the 80 people. Um, so, you know, do the math, um, I won't, but. <laughs> yeah, and then this high level that we got with the group too and how miraculously the energies work together, I think is, there's so many incredible things that went down with this project and your contribu contributions just were mwah, 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 beautiful. Well, I'm just thankful to have had the opportunity to put it together and, and get creative with it and, and like pay homage to the tune and to the, the other arrangements that have been done of it, but also bring, you know, 2021's energy um, and women being at the forefront and not behind the man and, and, you know, all of the bad things, you know, I don't wanna, we don't need to talk about that. We know how badly women are underappreciated, but I just wanted to, to create a piece that was really swinging and really fun and that empowered women and, um, and yeah. young women too, young yeah. women. Like if I was, if I was 12 or 13 and coming up and insecure about myself and I heard that, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, some of these songs I'm hearing, they are, you know, they're so wrong lyrically, but the, I like the song. It almost sounds like you've opened up a Pandora's box to a whole project that could turn into something that is, that, that saves us from having to discard a lot of music that is, sort of wrong like Cherokee's another one I have a problem with mm -hmm. I do I just don't know if that should be part of our repertoire it seems a little controversial at this time that we're singing about a young Indian maiden and it's just okay the chords are good but time time to write something new time to use our creativity to move things forward to a better space and you did that and you Probably. played and you sang and you were gorgeous and Oh, it's just the whole time. My only, my only negative is always just like, I can't wait for us to be live. Can we get out of the boxes and into a room breathing and sweating together? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, let's not forget to tell our audience, our listeners, whoever shows up here to watch my little YouTube channel that I've started. Um, Jordan has a Ted talk called composing your way. Jordan Davis, J-O-R-D-Y-N Davis. So check that out too. And you're at Michigan State? Yes, I'm finishing up my master's degree in jazz studies this May, and I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> I think you're probably going to come to New York and we're going to play together. Oh, I hope so. And other things. We're all going to be running into each other madly around the world before we know it. Well, thank you just such a my treat my my gift my everyone's like what'd you do over the holidays i'm like i hung out with all these amazing women and tried <laughs> not to ruin their concert <laughs> by listening and editing and then crying because it was so beautiful and yeah well, your guidance was certainly appreciated mm. well you all made it really easy because everything you contributed was so strong if it had been weak and like oh dear it would have been work but it wasn't work it was more like hmm Let's see, a little bit of a little bit of drawing and little sketchings in between and away we go. Gorgeous.
Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're amazing. Mwah. Meg, who um, we have to talk about Meg because Meg's kind of extraordinary in the fact that she even got anything on tape and video in the midst of moving during all this. That's just yeah. crazy. You want to talk about the whole process or? Yeah, sure. Um, just let us know where you're at school and, and everything, a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I, I was moving within the, the whole process of this. My, my family can't stand stay still. I'm the complete opposite. I always want to be in one place, but you know, we were, we were moving to Henderson and we had like nothing in the house. I had like a couple of Lamp, um, vases like if you've seen one of the videos I have a little yellow vase on the side just yeah on the side because there's nothing in the house um <laughs> but yeah I mean working like the, the the band lab made it really easy to just work through it um right also which is working with all these amazing females and all musicians like they're just so uh, so inspiring and it, it was really great to play especially all of your compositions like I didn't get a composition in because I'm still working through that but it was it, so it really made my job easier just so you know if you had, had one i'd be like oh no now there's another great one now what yeah. do do? everyone's music is so good i know it was all like every chart it was just every every time i sat down to record even like a tune over and over i got chills the entire time it was great yeah that's um, a sign of good music is it doesn't get old take after take when i was listening yeah. to it, i was like oh i heard something different every time so mm -hmm. that's that's good yeah. solid yeah, you were awesome. And, and you were, you know, you were thrown into the fire there. <laughs> like here, just play drums on this stuff while your drums are in storage, would you? No, that was really great. It's great. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you both. You're just thank amazing you. human beings. And um, I'm glad we get to share this in completion now for the world. And uh, tell your friends and family. Spread the word, Sisters in Jazz 2021. We will be back this group will be back in live form. And a lot of people really liked it too. I got a lot of great feedback. And I'm yeah. sure there'll be more too once this, this thing is launched to the world. All right, you all. Well, thank you so much. I'm gonna go practice my trumpet now.
do you want to become? Just know that the choice is yours. Don't think because you don't see. 